Good morning. It's September the 9th of 2019. Today I was taking a sleeper train from Amati in Kazakhstan to Urumqi in China. That's my train. I hope you enjoyed the video. I arrived a day earlier at Amati from Astana or Nur Sultan by a Togo sleeper train. I will do a station review of Amati first before I will review the train itself, like I promised in my previous video. Buses do stop at Almaty to railway station, but I took the metro. This is about a 6 minute walk from the railway station and it's a terminal station for the metro system. There's only one line. You'll also find some really amazing artworks. I really recommend you to visit the metro when you have time for this. From an experience point of view, I can tell you that it's important to take the right exit at the metro station. So when you take the exit with the horse in the night above, you will be at the right part of the railway station and you have to walk a little bit less. My train will be departing from station number 2. Well, it will make a stop at station number 1 as well, but I will only be reviewing station number 2 in this video. Station number 2 is the closest station to the city center. Lots of national and international trains depart from here. This is not a big station, but still you might find all the necessary needs you may expect at a station. There's a souvenir shop, a supermarket, you can drop your luggage, and there's lots of space to wait. When I arrived at the station, my train was listed at the departure screen, and I actually I could enter my train right away. There are two trains per week between Almaty and Urumqi in China. There's one direct train, that's this one, and there's another train where you have to change trains at the border. Both trains do have a different route and this one is the shortest route. This line has only been introduced since 2017, so it's pretty new. This will be the only Chinese sleeper train that I'm taking. Well, I can get into a lot of details about this, but it's one of the lower ranked trains. It's a K train. So in general you can take this trip report as a normal trip report on a K train as well. This means the trains can only run 120 km per hour and they make more stops at middle and large stations. Despite the fact that these are lower ranked trains, I will stay on a forward soft sleeper, these trains are still pretty comfortable. One of the most important things when you take this train is bring your own toilet paper. Like many trains in China and Russia and Kazakhstan, the route is listed on the side of the train. Buying a ticket for this train is a kind of complicated because you cannot do it yourself. Someone else has to do it for you and my ticket was delivered to my hotel. Even information on the website of the Kazakh railway company in Russian or Kazakh is limited. When everybody is getting ready for departure from station Amati number 2, the train is going slowly to Amati station number 1. There it will change direction and will go directly to the border town between Kazakhstan and China on the Kazakh side. So here's a little compartment tour. Um, wow, just like Russian trains, there's a big mirror at the door. You can lock it from the inside so nobody can get in from out. Uh, when you completely close the door, you can lock it like this as well, so the conductor can open it for you. Um, there's a button to call the conductor. Switch on or off the light. Uh, loudspeaker volume, air conditioning. Um, over here. Um, well, you can use it as a kind of ladder to use the upper berth. I'm staying in a four berth compartment in a Chinese K train. Um, as you can see, four berth. I do have the lower one. Um, over here, there are two power plugs. Um, this man, and just like the Russian trains. Um, There is a case for your luggage, but this looks rather interesting. Um, blankets will be given to you by the conductor. I already have mine over there. Um, wow, just like pretty much every night train, there's a lot of space for your luggage over there. Um, it is air conditioned, what's really nice. Um, 
this is the hallway i will do a little train tour later on and what's really nice when there's a lot of sun you can just close this so it gets a little darker um it's also nice when you travel at night um well there's some reading lights of course um i do have one other passenger at the moment but i think there will be two others as well uh, yeah, that's about it for the compartment this train only consists of four bird sleeping compartments or as they call it in china soft sleepers I feel like the compartments are a little bit more spacious than on my previous trains and also on most European night trains. At the end of each carriage, route information should be displayed. Well, should be displayed. In this case, it didn't work that well. You can also find a hot water point at the end of each carriage. The conductor has his own apartment while in the beginning of the end of each carriage, like you just saw there. And the other compartments will be behind that. On the other side of each carriage, you'll find two toilets and washing facilities. I have to say that the quality of the cleanness of the toilets was very different per toilet. In general, these were okay, but I saw some toilets that were, well, I would not categorize them as clean. Although soap was everywhere available. And by the way, did I already mention you should bring your own toilet paper? While on most trains you're not allowed to smoke, you may smoke here at the balcony. There's even an ashtray. While the train is heading to the border, I really get this Silk Road feeling. When you think about a Silk Road, you expect these kind of landscapes, right? In the afternoon the train reaches the station of Altinkol. This is the last station in Kazakhstan and this is actually a huge transport hub for cargo trains. Many trains that will go along the Silk Road overland will pass this point. Because there is a different track gates in China and the former Soviet Republic, the containers will be placed to other trains here. At this place there is literally nothing except for this huge transport hub. Well, at the station you also find a shop. Not that many passenger trains do stop here, so it's no surprise that there are almost no facilities. After a stop of about 20 minutes, the train continues its journey to a place, well, a small station where the custom formalities will take place on the Kazakh side of the border. From here I was also able to see how huge this transport hub is. I'm in huge favor of transport over land instead of taking an aeroplane or a ship. It's way more environmental friendly and it's a lot faster than a ship and way cheaper than taking an aeroplane. It's actually a pity that there's only one passenger train crossing this border per week on both directions. Because I'm getting really close to the border, I stopped filming after this point. Custom formalities at the Chinese side of the border will take place in the station of the town of Gorgos. This train is being advertised as that it's an advantage that you don't have to change trains at the border. Well, this might be an advantage, but at the moment you will enter the station, you have to get out, take all your luggage, go through customs and after customs you can get in with all your luggage. To me that feels basically the same as when I have to change trains. Still though, this route is faster than the other route between Almaty and Urumqi. While the passengers were going through customs, the train was getting a new wheel set. In China they used standard gate tracks and in the former Soviet Republic they used broad gate tracks. The station itself is not big, but you'll find a convenience store which might be very helpful. After the train has got its new wheel set, it will come in to another platform because of the different track gauges and will continue its journey to Urumqi. From here also lots of Chinese people will join us. Because there are no time differences in China, in this part of China the sun is rising really late in the morning. 
Although I slept pretty well, the train made a lot of stops at night. I have the impression that the biggest part of the track was single track, so we had to wait a lot for trains that coming from the other direction. One time when the train stood still, I just went out to see what was going on, and there was only a platform. I think it was a little bit like this, of which I saw a lot on the high speed line. This is in my next track report, by the way. While the train is heading to Urumsi, you see that you're getting into a bigger city area. And just take in mind, for Chinese standards, this is not a big city. The last part, just before the train arrives at the station, went really slow. So, good morning from Urumsi station. Um, I had some delay at night, uh, but overall it was a good trip. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up when you like to see more of these videos and also subscribe to my channel when you like to see more, of course. Um, tomorrow I will take a high speed train from this station to Lanzhou or Lanzhou, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, see you again. <laughs>